There are four statements that the traditional narrative gets wrong about World War II German and Italian divisions. And the first statement is, in 1941, Hitler wanted to expand the number of panzer divisions. So what he did was, he took one panzer regiment from each of the panzer divisions and formed more divisions from them. Each panzer division went from two regiments to one regiment, Thus, Hitler weakened the panzer divisions. Hashtag, it's all Hitler's fault. And if you read Guderian's memoirs, this is stated quite firmly. After the Western campaign, Hitler ordered a considerable increase in the number of panzer and motorized infantry divisions. The number of panzer divisions was soon doubled, though this involved a halving of the tank strength of each division. Thus, the German army, though doubling its nominal strength in armoured Divisions did not acquire double the number of tanks, which was after all what counted. Guderian is suggesting two things. A, that the panzer divisions were weakened, perhaps half as weak, because of Hitler. And B, that the number of tanks per division is what matters most. Basically, the more tanks you have, the better. But is this really the case? In this exact same period, Rommel goes to North Africa with two panzer divisions. These end up being the 15th and 21st panzer divisions. Both of these divisions have one panzer regiment and one infantry regiment, so half infantry and half tanks. They also have some support units like anti-tank engineers and so on, but basically it's half tanks and half infantry. And Rommel says, the balance is off, I need more reinforcements. And being Hitler's star general, he gets these reinforcements. Do you want to know what reinforcements he gets? Infantry. He requests and receives more infantry. Not tanks, infantry. Now, I'm sure if Hitler had given him more panzer divisions, he wouldn't have complained. But the point is that Rommel thinks the balance between his infantry and tanks is off. And he asks for more infantry, and he gets the infantry. If the panzer divisions had been weakened, and tanks are what mattered, then why is Rommel not asking for more tanks? The early panzer divisions had three regiments, two panzer and one motorized infantry regiment. This is known as a triangular division, three-sided, three regiments, triangular. Guderian is complaining that one of the panzer regiments is removed, thus weakening the panzer divisions by halving the tanks. This new formation is known as a binary division, two-sided, two regiments, binary. Rommel's armored divisions have one panzer regiment and one infantry regiment, a binary division. He's asking for more infantry because the balance is off. The British, who are against him in Operation Crusader, have an armoured division that has two tank brigades with three tank uh, regiments in each, and a support group which is a mix of infantry and artillery. There is little to no infantry in the British formation, meaning that they have a force that is very tank heavy. Yes, it outnumbers Rommel's tank force, as well as the Italians, but despite this, it gets completely chewed up. The Germans run rings around it, and, well, why? Surely if you've got more tanks, this is better, right? That's what Guderian is saying. Well, no. Tanks are very important. Very, very important. But this isn't a tank war. This is a combined arms war. Infantry with their anti-tank guns, anti-aircraft guns like Flak 88s, air superiority, naval gun support, artillery, recon, signals equipment, maintenance formations, logistical formations, uh, construction companies, and so on and so on. The British tank heavy force goes up against the Germans' more balanced force, and their tanks are taken out by the German infantry and anti-tank guns. Yes, the panzers play their part, by luring the British tanks into the anti-tank gun screens. And this is the lesson that the British have to learn the hard way, by getting their tanks wiped out over and over, until somebody finally realizes that there's a problem here. Same with the Soviets. Soviet tank divisions in 1941 had two tank regiments and one infantry regiment, similar to the British, as well as the previous German organization. 
As David Glantz notes, such divisions were unbalanced, having far more tanks than other combat arms elements. When talking about the Soviet mechanized corps, which would consist of mostly tank divisions, Isev says, Now the overwhelming majority of the tanks in the Red Army were to be amalgamated into mechanized corps with a standard combat strength of 1,031 tanks. The formations and units designed to support infantry disappear completely. Theoretically, this put a greater number of tanks in the hands of the commanders when undertaking flexible combat operations. Experience in battle, however, would not underpin this decision. Essentially, it seems that reducing the number of tanks per division is actually a good thing. In fact, all sides learnt this during the war, but the Germans actually learnt it earlier and put it into practice, which is one of the reasons they did so well in the early war period. What the Germans realise is that tanks alone cannot win battles. Combined arms warfare is essential. In the book Towards Combined Arms Warfare by Jonathan House, the guy who works a lot with David Glantz, he talks about what the Germans learnt after the invasion of Poland. A basic result of the German invasion of Poland was to begin the slow evolution of the German Panzer Division structure towards greater balance amongst the arms. At the time of the Polish campaign, the six Panzer Divisions averaged between 276 and 302 tanks each, organised into a Panzer Brigade of four battalions. These same divisions had only three battalions of infantry and two of artillery. This tank-heavy force proved too unwieldy for some commanders. The Germans also used light divisions, which were two motorized infantry regiments and one panzer battalion. Interestingly, this light division formation would be what the motorized divisions would form into during the mid-war period. At the time, these were viewed as poor man's uh, panzer divisions, but later they would be seen as an acceptable divisional type. And the main point to note is that the Germans were experimenting with different divisional styles, trying to figure out which were the best designs. This is the beginning of the tank age. Nobody knows what the ideal armoured formation looks like yet. And to this day, opinion is still divided. The reason there was a bunch of light divisions in the first place was probably so they could test out this design. They then, in the time of the French campaign, reduced the four battalions in the Panzer divisions to three, and placed the spare battalions into the light divisions to make full Panzer divisions. But they didn't do this with all of the light divisions, just some of them. Some light divisions remained after this conversion, and all the Panzer divisions then went from one Panzer Brigade consisting of two regiments totaling four battalions to one Panzer Regiment of three battalions or even two battalions. Not a single old two regiment Panzer division remained. This meant the Panzer divisions had three infantry and three tank battalions at the time of France. As House concludes, this trend towards a more balanced division will continue throughout the war. If this move to less panzers per division was bad, you'd think they retain at least a couple of two regiment panzer divisions. But they didn't. Certainly by the time you get to Stalingrad, the panzer divisions have two infantry regiments and one panzer regiment. There's more infantry than tanks, and this is because tank heavy forces are vulnerable and you need infantry to do the tasks the tanks can't do, like take out anti-tank guns. Thus, what Guderian is saying here is false. Taking one panzer regiment from the panzer divisions to create more panzer divisions is actually a good thing. It means there's more panzer divisions. There's greater flexibility for those divisions and there's more balance in the force. <clears throat> in fact, the Germans had already started doing this after the Polish campaign, not prior to Barbarossa, as Guderian implies. The German panzer divisions went from four battalions in Poland to three 
Panzer battalions in France, and then two Panzer battalions by the time of Barbarossa. And this has nothing to do with tank production. The French armoured division had four tank and one infantry battalion. This was seen as too tank heavy at the time. The Italian Areti division also had two tank regiments and one infantry regiment. Again, tank heavy. The British had two tank brigades with one mixed artillery and infantry brigade. By 1942, they'd realised that this was way too tank heavy and got rid of one of the armoured brigades and replaced the mixed support group with a full infantry brigade. But they only did this in 1942. The Germans had already done this far sooner because they'd learnt that you don't want a tank heavy force. If you look at the German army today, 10th Panzer Division has one armoured brigade and essentially three infantry brigades. 1st Panzer Division has one Panzer Brigade and two motorized brigade. Yes, it also has an armored demonstration brigade, but this only has one panzer battalion within it. And most of the other units are actually infantry or other units. And if we look at the modern day German army and compare them to the 1945 German divisions, there's some interesting comparisons to be made. On the left, we have the standard 1945 Panzer Division template, minus supply and artillery. On the right, we have the modern day 21st Panzer Brigade, minus its supply battalion. Now, if we compare the two, what we can see is that the 1945 Division has the same number of reconnaissance and engineers, but twice as much infantry and tanks. Okay, and a modern Panzer Division has three or four of these brigades, so it's much bigger. But here's the point, if we times the modern day brigade by 4, and double the 1945 Panzer Division to make them equivalent units, we'd get the same number of tanks and infantry, but double the amount of engineers and reconnaissance. The ratio for infantry and tanks remains the same, but the modern day army has more support units, engineers, reconnaissance, and if I'd included it, the uh, supply services as well. This tells us that the ratio for the later war German units is better than the early war period, and the formations are more balanced. Same applies when you look at the other formations in the German army units. The balance between the tanks and the other arms does not favour the tanks. When you look at the British army prior to 2014, because it's changed since then and I don't have the up-to-date ratios, what you find is that Yes, 1st Armoured Division had two armoured brigades uh, within it, but when you look at it, they only had two tank battalions and three infantry battalions. Again, more infantry than tanks. When you look at the 1st US Armoured Division today, the same thing applies. Yes, they have two armoured brigades and one infantry brigade, but again, there's infantry in the armoured brigades. When you add it up, there's more infantry than armoured battalions. And this is the army which has the most money spent on it in the world today. If the US Army isn't deploying tank-heavy forces, then you know it's not because they can't afford to build enough tanks. If the lesson was more tanks is better, then you'd see modern armies deploying more tank versus infantry units. But you're not seeing that. What you are seeing are far more balanced forces. Tanks, infantry, recon, support, artillery, engineers, logistics, and so on. So this traditional narrative, which states that the reduction of panzer forces in the panzer divisions is bad, is completely false. It was actually a good idea, based on the experience they'd learned in the early part of the war. And this is backed up by a ton of evidence from the time and also since then. It either shows that Guderian's concept of tank warfare was immature, which might be the case, or it shows that he is taking advantage of his reader's lack of knowledge on the principles of warfare. The average reader isn't going to understand force organizational structures or combined arms doctrine. Most of the readers think, and people still think this today, that tanks are the main element in a modern army. Tanks, tank museums, world of tanks, world of tanks too, tanks a lot for supporting me on Patreon. Please consider supporting me on there and make these videos as good as they can be. So really, Guderian is taking advantage of the reader's ignorance to give weight to his argument that Hitler was a madman who didn't listen to his generals, even though Hitler wasn't making decisions in a vacuum. And in this case, this had little to do with Hitler. This was actually what the German army wanted to do based on their experience so far in the war. And in reality, it proved to be a successful concept to reduce the size of their panzer divisions. 
The second statement of the traditional narrative says, In 1938, Mussolini wanted to expand his army, but didn't want to introduce conscription. So, what he did was, he took one regiment from each of his divisions and created more divisions with the spare regiments. Thus, he weakened the individual divisions, and this helps explain why the Italian army wasn't much good in the Second World War. So, the Italians went from triangular divisions to binary divisions in 1938. Binary divisions are smaller divisions than triangular ones, therefore binary divisions are bad. Problem. Rommel lands in North Africa with two panzer divisions. These were the 15th and 21st panzer divisions. And what did we say before? They only have one panzer regiment and one motorized infantry regiment. They are binary divisions, and this is 1941 before Barbarossa. The Germans do have the option of giving Rommel more reinforcements at this stage, but they don't. They give him binary divisions. And if binary divisions are bad, why was Rommel able to do so well with them? And you might be thinking, yes, but Tick, you said before that Rommel asked for more infantry. And yes, he did. He received two additional infantry regiments. But do you want to know what he did with those infantry regiments? He created a whole new division with them. The Africa Division, also known as the 90th Light Division. This was an infantry division with two infantry regiments. Another binary division. So Rommel didn't give his two panzer divisions an extra infantry regiment each and make them triangular divisions. Instead, he made another binary division and now had three binary divisions. If binary divisions are so bad, why was Rommel using them? And why was he choosing to use them? And why did he do so well with them? In late 1940, the Germans changed the motorized divisions to binary divisions, removing the 3rd Regiment. This then allowed them to create more divisions. But, just like the old light division design, they added a panzer battalion or assault gun battalion to each division to give them more firepower. So, they don't have enough tanks to form panzer divisions, but they'll waste their tanks on the panzer battalions in motorized divisions. This is, in fact, a debate recognized at the time. But clearly, there must be some sort of advantage that binary divisions have over a triangular division. What's also interesting to note is that these binary divisions are basically at brigade strength, bearing in mind that brigades in the German army at the time are being phased out. If you look at the Soviets, they're also producing brigade strength units, as I've talked about in another video. For the Italians, it was actually their experience in Ethiopia, as well as other places, that prompted them to turn their triangular divisions into binary divisions. So you see, the Italians developed a combined arms doctrine called the War of Rapid Decision. This was essentially their blitzkrieg doctrine, although it wasn't quite the same. Basically, the Italians wanted to fight a mobile war, and they thought that this war would be fought in northern Italy, because that's where they had fought in the First World War, so that's where they'd fight again. Right? So, coupled with their experience in Ethiopia, Spain, and in other conflicts, they thought binary divisions could offer a flexible solution to the problem of fighting in the mountain passes. What they wanted was to achieve rapid penetration of the enemy lines using flanking movements and more support units. Unlike the Great War, the Italians would seek to flank the enemy rather than attack straight at their front, getting mowed down. This meant that they wanted lots of smaller but more mobile divisions which were more flexible in order to outflank the enemy. These smaller divisions would have better support units and would be faster moving formations overall. So speed was the essential component of this combined arms doctrine. What they did then was create binary divisions. So an infantry division would have two infantry regiments and one artillery regiment plus other support units. The idea was that these smaller divisions would simply be more maneuverable and there would be more of them. So if you imagine that the enemy has 10 divisions along the front and the Italians would have 15 smaller divisions and would be more flexible and able to get around the enemy in theory at least. And the thing is, the binary division concept is not a bad idea in itself. What we have to remember is that Rommel is also using binary divisions in North Africa. 
Some British units, like the 1st South African Division, are also binary divisions, and these fought in Ethiopia as well. If you want flexibility and maneuverability, like in Africa, go binary. It doesn't by itself explain why the Italians fought so badly in the World War II. However, it is a factor, but not solely because of the binary division concept. The issue is that the Italians create three problems by changing to binary divisions that are unique to them at the time. The first is that any maneuverability the Italians gain by changing their infantry divisions to binary divisions is negated because they're not facing standard foot infantry divisions. Yes, they may be faster and flexible than a typical non-motorized triangular division, but you're not facing non-motorized divisions. The British are motorized, so any maneuverability that the Italians might have picked up by changing to binary divisions is completely offset by the fact that they're not using motorized divisions. And O'Connor completely runs rings around them during Operation Compass, so the main advantage of using binary divisions is completely negated. The second problem is that the Italians forget to sort out their logistical services in their new divisions. They reduce the number of support units, thinking that smaller divisions required less support. This meant that they couldn't go too far before they outrun their supply lines, and because they had less support units, their maneuverability was curtailed. So this was a double whammy on the mobility scale. But the third reason is, for me, the most important. What happens when you take two triangle divisions and turn them into three binary divisions? You have roughly the same number of troops, but you have an additional divisional staff level. So, you need more officers to fill that staff unit. Where do these officers come from? The lower units. You have officers promoted above their ranks. You have officers pulled from the NCOs. You have new officers and new NCOs coming into the army that are completely new. And if you think about it, what you hear most about the Italians in the Second World War is not that their men are bad fighters, but that their officers were poor. Rommel himself says they are poorly led. And Rommel doesn't have this issue because the Germans have a pool of experienced officers to pull from. So Rommel can create binary divisions, but the Italians do not have the luxury. It's bad because the Italians do not have the experienced officers or the logistical and motorized resources to make it work. So next time you hear this idea that binary divisions are what weaken the Italian army, yes, but not necessarily because it reduced the number of men in the division, as often said. The third statement is, the Germans could not replenish their losses in tanks or infantry. The Germans up until Kursk in 1943 did replenish their manpower and tank losses. I've said this a thousand times now, but the Germans had the most tanks in December of 1942 at 7,798, and had the most men ever at the front in July of 1943 at 3,483,000 men. The Germans more than replaced their manpower losses in the first three years of the war. And every time I say this, I get a bunch of people in the comments section crying because the Germans uh, didn't write this in their memoirs, and it doesn't reflect the reality. But, don't worry guys, I'm about to show you why the German memoirs are correct, as are the statistics. In fact, they complement each other perfectly. And, to show you this, we'll look at the fourth statement. In the early war period, the German divisions had nine battalions, but because of losses, these were reduced to six battalions. Therefore, the German divisions became weaker as the war progressed. So, what we have here is a problem, a contradiction. On the one hand, we have statistics showing that the Germans replenished their losses, but their divisions were also getting smaller. Each German infantry division has three regiments, and each regiment has three battalions. They then reduced the number of battalions in the regiments down to two battalions. So they went from nine to six battalions. But if they are replacing their losses, which they are, then why do they do this? Alright, let's do some quick math here. The Germans have 100 standard infantry divisions going east in 1941. There's other infantry divisions like motorized, mountain, and light, but let's just go with the standard infantry for now. 
let's say they take three battalions from every single one of the divisions. They don't, but for argument's sake, let's say they do. Thus, these 100 divisions go from 9 to 6 infantry battalions. And this is classed as a bad thing. But here's the deal. In 1942, they increased the number of standard infantry divisions to 127. That's an extra 27 divisions. Plus, we know that these divisions, these new ones coming into the Eastern Front, have the full nine battalions. If 100 divisions reduce their battalions from nine to six, they go from 900 battalions to 600 battalions. So there's a reduction of 300 battalions. 27 divisions are created. What's 27 times nine? It's 243. Plus you have an increase in other divisions like motorized, mountaineer, and light divisions and so on, which probably took the manpower from the other 50 or so spare battalions. So what we have here is a conscious decision to reduce the number of battalions per division to create a bunch of new divisions. It has nothing to do with manpower losses. If the Germans wanted to, they could have kept their current 100 divisions at nine battalions each, but they chose not to do that. They chose to reduce the battalions per division to put them in the new divisions. This then backs up what the German memoirs were saying about the reduction of manpower per division, but it also doesn't contradict the fact that the Germans did replace their manpower losses. Let's look at North Africa again. You have two panzer divisions with one regiment of panzers and one of infantry. How many panzer battalions were there in the regiments? Two. And how many infantry battalions in the regiments? Two. That's four in total battalions. In the Africa Infantry Division, you have two regiments, uh, one with three battalions and one with two infantry and one artillery battalion. So at the very least, it seems that the Germans were toying with the idea of reducing their battalion numbers in mid-1941. And in the case of Rommel's panzer divisions, this is even before the Eastern Front begins. Let's look at the 24th Panzer Division. You have a panzer regiment, which actually has three panzer battalions for some reason, and two panzer grenadier regiments. How many battalions are in each of the two infantry regiments? Two. These are the elite German formations. And they're deployed with two infantry battalions in their infantry regiments. Yes, sometimes they have three, but not always. And I suspect it's the newer or less experienced formations that have the full three battalions for each regiment. But as the war progressed, it seems that the Germans consciously shifted to smaller divisions. And let's go back a bit. How many battalions are in a binary division? Six. And how many are in these new, smaller German divisions. Six. The difference is the Germans have three regiments rather than two. Why? Maybe it's because they have a lot of experienced officers, unlike the Italians or many of the other powers. They can afford to create smaller divisions because they have enough experienced officers that can manage them. And let's not forget, just because you've taken three infantry battalions from the divisions doesn't mean you've reduced the support units of those divisions. You've still got artillery regiments. You've still got engineer battalions and recon battalions. In fact, the number of these units across the whole front has increased. And you have an additional 27 infantry divisions with an additional 27 reconnaissance units, 27 artillery regiments, 27 engineer battalions, and so on. So when you hear, yes, but the new divisions weren't at full strength, well, yeah, because they've got to fill the ranks of these extra units as well. All right, then why didn't they just keep the old nine battalion divisions? Why move to the six battalion divisions? Good question. However, you're assuming that nine battalions is better than six. But is this really the case? Well, this new structure allows you to have more divisions across the entire front. It provides as much support per division in terms of artillery and engineers, etc., which means you have more firepower across the whole front. It also means you have more logistical services across the whole front as well, since there were bakers and logistical services in each division, and it probably provided greater flexibility to the German divisions. Just like the Italians had realized that smaller divisions could be more maneuverable, but weren't really able to implement that because they had poor officers, the Germans didn't have poor officers, and they were able to make 
the six battalion divisions work with three regiments each because their officers were trained and experienced. Also, what you have to remember is that at this stage in the war, the Soviets were using smaller divisions and even just brigades to fight the Germans. So smaller German divisions are still larger than their opponents. Maybe the Germans were finding themselves getting outflanked or counterattacked constantly on the flanks and needing they needed a more flexible and smaller divisional organization. That would actually make a lot of sense. Now, I'm not saying that the German divisions didn't sustain losses or that they weren't replacing their men with high quality replacements. Of course, the divisions and the battalions were reduced in strength even with the replacements coming in. Replacements didn't trickle to the front, they came in waves. And between these waves, the divisions would be reduced in manpower. And they didn't have full equipment stocks either for the same reason. But organizationally, at least, it could be argued that the German army wasn't reduced in its capabilities by changing to a 6 battalion divisional structure. The question really is, what was the main reason they did it? Was it because this allowed the Germans to focus their units on the south for Foul Blau? Is it because it's a good way of getting new units without mobilizing a total war economy? Is it because... Defence was the name of the game in the North and Centre, so you no longer needed uh, the full nine battalion divisions. Was it because this was a more efficient divisional organisational structure? Was it because your officers are better trained and can handle two battalion regiments without the need for a third? Or is it because you need to expand your army and there's a lack of officers overall, so you can't just raise up a bunch of new divisions. You have to take the officers from the other divisions to fill in the gaps. Currently, I don't know the answer. I suspect it's a combination of several of these factors and perhaps more as well. But what I can confirm is that this was a conscious choice made by the army. They could, if they had wanted to, simply not have created more divisions and just raised the current divisions back to nine battalions. They replaced their manpower losses, so why not do this? Well, they chose not to do it. It's as simple as that. They chose to create a bunch of new divisions in 1942 and send them south. And this comes back to the idea that German units were depleted and steadily got more depleted as the war went on. Post-cursed 1943, yes, things start going south, but the statistics tell a different story prior to Kursk. Yes, there will always be months where the army is short. Yes, they will never there will never be a division in combat at 100% strength, but it is not a gradual decline prior to Kursk. It's more like a wave. You have losses for a couple of months, then a new wave of replacement comes in, then another dip, and then more replacements again. And it keeps going on like this until at least Kursk. And coupled with the prioritization of where the replacements go, which I've already covered in a previous video for 19 42. Uh, reinforcements may end up going to the army group center rather than the army group south for various reasons. This then leaves units short in army group south, but not in army group center. You then obviously have certain prioritizations within the armies themselves, with one division favored over another one for one reason or another. It makes sense to keep your panzer divisions at full strength and not have some random infantry division at full strength, because what's the point? But in general, the Germans are are able to replace their losses. So this explains why you have some accounts of German units being reduced in strength and having a lack of manpower, and why the statistics themselves show that the Germans were able to replace their losses prior to Kursk. Post Kursk, the Germans aren't able to recover, and that's when you see units getting properly depleted. But prior to Kursk, the Germans are able to replenish their losses and there are other reasons as to why they're reducing the sizes of their divisions. Organisationally, bearing in mind that they're trying to figure out the best unit for a combined arms doctrine, it makes a lot of sense for smaller units. So, there we go. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this because very little, very, very little has been written on this uh, in the literature. And some of what has been written have questioned in this video because... This is contradicted by other examples. So I'm certainly not going to pretend to know all the answers, but clearly there are assumptions about the way things were uh, that aren't necessarily correct, and it's good to question them. 
and I can't wait to hear your counter arguments. Um, it's going to be fun. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting if you are a patron and bye for now.